so many people today. <laughs> so some familiar faces here. Some strange faces. What do you think? Some might agree, some don't really know what it means, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just before I jump into here, there's actually a funny story that I want to tell before this one. So, and it's actually just happened. So, you know, two weeks before this event, right? So, Miss Ha right there, she was. She uh, posted to WTA about this event, Success Club 7. So in the in the post, my girlfriend was sitting right there. She noticed something very funny, and she showed me. So in the post, Miss Ha claimed that Daniel and I are professional marketing marketers with many years of marketing experience, right? She just said that actually. It's funny because you know, unlike Daniel. He has like 10 years of marketing experience. Me, well, for me, my experience, it just basically, it just reached the lowest minimum amount of time that you can call it plural, which is two. I did check that. Yeah. Oh. I saw you have two, then we can call many. And <laughs> 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 with Daniel. I think it's um, a problematic amount, but I hope that it's going to be a problem. Yeah, so that was the funny story. Before I begin my presentation, I actually want uh, to have a word. I want to thank BDS for bringing me here uh, and for having a great ambitions and great people. I want to thank Wenai Na personally. She's the one who got me here. She actually tried to invite me to this for like two months from now on. And she said to all people how great of a speaker I am, even though she hasn't she had she hasn't heard me speaking anything yet. And I want to thanks to all my friends and so of you guys out here for being here today. It means a lot to me. So here's what I am, here's who I am, what I do. My name is Bing. I'm a girl marked at Vardin. I've been in the company for two years now. The story of how I get to Vardin is actually very funny, but I left that to another day. Then you can find my uh, contact, and if you don't, I will still be sticking around here, so don't be worried if you don't remember my social media. So, yeah. I heard in the beginning when we were doing that introduction round, I heard somebody here is um, she, yes. that girl over there, you have some experience in marketing, remember some girl over there too. But then, so who in here knows? What is marketing? Raise your hand. Quite, quite a lot. Who in here knows what growth marketing is? Some hands. Daniel knows. <laughs> Who in here knows the difference between growth marketing and growth hacking? Nobody. Great. So you came to the right place. Let's. Oh no. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I didn't, I, I didn't say anything. All right. So very quickly, here's the, the outline. So before we need before we need to know before we about to learn what growth marketing is, we need to know what marketing is about, right? So what I will be doing is that first, I tell you guys very briefly what is marketing. And then jumping to mar girl marketing, and then of course you heard the term girl marketing and girl hacking all the time, right? What's the difference between those? And the uh, the actual comparison between the growth and the traditional marketing. Before I jump in the first slide of explaining thing, I just want to uh, say something. A disclaimer: We all stand here to learn something. So I came here with a very 
great missions is that I want you guys to understand everything in here. So I spend a lot of time to do things here to create this presentation in a mission that after the end of this presentation you guys will have the good knowledge to actually leverage it more so that you guys don't feel left out in the conversations so that you guys know something because everyone knows something that everyone means. knows something that no one <laughs> know about. knows about, right? <laughs> <laughs> so if there's any term here that might seem a bit more thing, there's any lingo, there's any jargon in here, I will try to explain though very briefly. Here's how we're going to structure the presentation. I'm going to speak for 15 minutes and the, 10, the 5 minutes that I'm going to leave for discussions, so open questions. Alright, let's jump in. What is marketing? So, marketing, you can see, you, you hear those things every day. You know about those, but what actually is that? In here it says that it's the process of understanding your customers so that you can sell to them. And uh, that's the base fundamental of marketing. It's basically, for example, uh, when you're buying apple juice, right? The company will say that it's, it's 100% apple because that's what you want to hear. Or maybe when you want to buy a new phone. And those phone company will say that, okay, uh, our new phone has, you know, perform faster, better battery life, better camera and stuff. That is marketing. The aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product fit the customer. But then, what is growth marketing? <laughs> this is... I, I know, I understand. You guys don't know what this is. Believe me, I, when, I, when I stop researching about this, I don't know what this means either. But growth marketing is basically marketing 2.0. It introduced a new way to look at... Can you, can you guys see? Mm -hmm. Alright, great. So, is it, can I stand here? Yeah. Okay, alright. So it introduced a new way to look at marketing, to do marketing around the operationals. So it adds... So it's... The reason why I call that marketing 2.0, because deep down, growth marketing is still marketing. But there are so many layers above the growth marketing that makes it called grow. And uh, basically, growth marketing, we can shorten that in one word experiment. So, it's an endless local experiment. So, what do we do in growth marketing? In, uh, in usual marketing, right, then I will actually jump to that later, but I can talk a little bit about it, like normal marketing. So in normal marketing, you have, okay, so let's call this, let's, let's say this one is the product team, this one guy here, this one is the marketing guy, right, and this one is the, uh, is the sales persons. So in the usual, in the traditional marketing team, uh, in a software company, so what the product does is that, you know, the product team, they good research the market. They, uh, they look at the competitors, they look at the market, they look at the customer. So they found new features and they start, you know, coding those things. They bring in new features. And at this point, this guy right here doesn't have a single clue what this guy does. So after this guy is done, probably like, I don't know, after one month, two months, it can be even one year. Then he, he goes to Google Drive, he brought up new features, and he said A, faster, B, better, C, more dog and cat pictures. And he brings the document to this guy, Martin right here, and he said, hey, do your job. 
So basically, they just spend one to two months doing something that this guy knows completely nothing about, and the only thing he received is basically some images and a Google Drive document. So all these guys die, then, you know, he would go on to look at those with the team, and then he would look at the best practice in the marketing, and then he would, you know, look at what he has done in the past with marketing, he craft a plan, he hopes that the plan will work. He doesn't know for sure. And he puts that up. After that, the sales completely no idea what this guy has done. Marketing comes to the sales, hey, we're just marketing. New people are interested, sell to them. Do you guys see the problems here? The problem is that this is a very time consuming cycle and very little collaborations and communication between the team. And everything is basically, you know, just feeling, hoping for something to get done. So that's why growth marketing appears. Growth marketing is basically not counting on the, not counting on any of these guys, but instead, growth marketing is basically, let's just say I'm the girl guy right here, okay, so I ask this guy, hey, give me an update, and he gives me, I ask this guy, hey, what do you think about this, and I get this, and I ask this girl, hey, what do you think about this, and I have a bunch of those, because each department, they have a different set of data, right, and of course we want to optimize them, we want to optimize all of those data, into crafting something that is actually work. So what we do is that we don't craft, we don't make a single plan. Instead, we think that selling thing and customer, they are very complex. They are psychological creatures, they are their psychologies, their brain is working very complicated. So we decide that, you know, maybe we shouldn't really focus on one thing. We should look at the data from all of this and we should design experiments. So firstly, determine the area. What does this mean? So there are many areas inside a company, right? We have the uh, people who buy the stuff, we have the people who just know about the stuff, we have, uh, and we have some funders, like we have people who, uh, I don't know, maintain the stuff, let's say, like so. so we determine the area. It can also be the, in the software company, we have the things called onboarding flow. That's a very important channel because that channel, it brings and it keeps the people in. So first we need to mind, we want to work on this area. Okay, so this is actually right here. Just, you know, so okay. So first you need to mind the area. It's actually moving like this. <laughs> so it's not clockwise, counterclockwise. And then you move to the design experiment. So you have the area you want to focus on. You have that one channel, right? You don't look at everything, you look at only one. And start thinking, design the experiment. What does this experiment? It can mean anything. It can mean changing something on a website. It can mean changing the message. It can mean uh, sending them something new. So we design the experiment and usually it's not just one experiment. It's several experiments. And then we have the hypothesis, so we start testing that. We launch the experiment, and after we launch that, we start analyzing that, and that cycle just continues like that. So we keep experimenting, we keep getting more data, we try to do things in a very short cycle. In, inside of, in that process, we want to gain as much insight as possible, and the study is thick. So, does anyone get this what actually mean the difference between girl marketing and marketing? It's the data driven. It's about using the data. <clears throat> Here are some of the key points difference between traditional marketing and growth marketing. So traditional marketing, they focus on the company level. You know, like they are selling car for example. So they they really they so company has a has a brand, right? Uh, for example, so you uh, watch, so Casio watch. Those are very classics. 
you think of those classic ones that's like this and you have those lines and then you have like Rolex, very fancy. So they focus on the branding, they want to emphasize the branding while the girl marketing, they actually cares about the customer and some of you might think that why doesn't the the marketing in here, they care about the customer itself. It's most of the time, typically, that they don't have the uh, they don't have the, the the approval from the upper manager to talk with the customer, or maybe the customer never know how to reach them. So it's very typical. And then in here, you have the campaign driven. That was that's what I was saying, right? Between these two, three guys. So this guy has a campaign. This guy has a product. He brings out the product and this guy starts doing the campaign. And this one starts failing. But in growth marketing, we don't really focus on the campaign, we focus on the strategy. We want to know how to run this one in the long term. We want to know what we want on. We want to know how to do this one in the long shot and not just basically put it up one time, one time and then forget about that. And the third one is a very, very important one. Some of you guys here have marketing background and you guys understand what this means. So, traditional marketing, they only care about top of the funnel. So this is like a funnel, right? This is like a funnel. So the above, you have the awareness. I know about this brand, that's awareness. And then, it starts getting tighter and tighter down the funnel. So I know about this brand. And then next one, maybe I want to do more research about this brand. So that's the occasion. And then, this brand seems pretty nice. I want to buy it. That's the activation. And after, after trying out the product, this is actually very great. And he keep doing that, he keep buying that. That's retention. And when he keep doing that, there come the revenue. And the last one is the referral. So you came to, your mom comes to the other, if you're one of your friends, mom say, hey, Omo is a great product, buy it, very wide color. That's refer. So in the traditional marketing, they only care about the top two of the funnels. They only care about if they know about the brand and if they can acquire. So that's what this guy is there. He only, because he doesn't have the possibility to do more, he only, when he receives the feature list from this guy, he can only hope that by this campaign, I hope that people know more about me. I hope that people start looking about me, looking to me. And the girl marketing, it penetrates. It penetrates through all the departments. It doesn't really care what the funnel is. Because girl marketing really is about retention. Girl marketing is customer centric. It cares about retention. It wants to understand the customer, it looks at the data. It looks at the data that they gather from the experiment to understand how a customer behaves, what do they want. And from those little things, they start doing more experiment, more experiment in a way that the customer will love their product so much. Have you ever been I guess some of you guys here are already working, right? And you have you have your supervisor and then sometimes you know something for sure that it doesn't work that way. We must do it this way, but then your boss just goes to you and say like, no 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 no. We have been doing this for a long time. I feel like you need to do this. That actually happens a lot. It, and that's the fourth point of this. It's traditional marketing is very opinion. It's based on feeling. It's based on like, and the other brand just, the other brand just launch something new. We need to do that as well. Or you have two things, and then you look at one thing and you say, hey, this one looks better than this one with no evidence. And grow marketing, it goes. Data is is religion. It doesn't include any feeling or emotions or say anything because everything is based on the evidence on the data that we collect from time to time. And the fifth one is basically what I just saying, annual planning, right? This guy takes two months, this guy takes one month, this girl takes three months, that's six months. Six months annual planning, that's half a year. But the, but the girl marketing, we don't work like that. We work in a giant. If, 
If you guys don't know what a chai, it means that it's... Um, so we have the O-way, which is the waterfall, which is doing everything at once and push it to customer, right? So it has been introduced a very long time, this Agile development. Basically, it goes in an iterative. You can think of that like a loop. So we do something, we test something, and then we deliver something. And we do that in many sprints like that until the final product. That's called Agile. So this guy, why he develop the features? He doesn't wait until the full features go ready. He actually gave a prototype of the first small feature, and he gave to this guy, hey, look at this. And this guy, when he has that, he does some paper, and he gives to this girl, and this, so that this girl can give those papers to the customer to see if the customer is actually interested. That's called a cycle, that's called iteration, that's called a sprint. Traditional marketing is basically doing something and hope for the best. And I tell you, in the long, in the long run, that will cost a lot of money. I'm not saying that growth marketing doesn't cost a lot of money, but at least it's more efficient. Here's how I have... Actually, before this one. So that was the... Uh, Simple introduction to growth marketing. <laughs> yeah, but you guys, what you guys most hear nowadays is growth hacking, right? Not growth marketing. Because it has the word hacking into that. It sounds sexy. It sounds very hacky. So I just tell a lot about growth marketing, but then, what is growth hacking actually? Is there a difference? Yes. So growth marketing, as you can see, is an operation. It's not just one single man job. It's the whole company trying to do that. So it's not actually this. When you say that you're a growth marketer, you can be basically any role in the company. You can be in the sales, you can be in the product, you can be in the IT department, you can even be in the HR. But when you're saying growth hacking, as you may assume from the work, hacking is basically walk around, doing small stuff in small places. So, before I jump in into what girl hacking actually is, here's a very, here's like a one sentence to talk about that. So I've talked about girl marketing, getting customers for long and sustainable. But girl hacking is to hack customer, get it for cheap and quick. You know, actually, before this meeting, I was actually talking with Daniel. He said that he used those terms interchangeably. And uh, he said that many people don't know the difference and most of them get it wrong. So I really hope that, you know, I might actually get some feedback from him today to see how wrong I am. Sean Ellis. Does anyone know that guy? He was the uh, father of growth hacking. He was the one who actually coined the term growth hacking. And the reason growth hacking was born is that startup, they want to do something quick, they want to get something fast. Traditional marketing doesn't work startup. You need a way to innovate idea, you need a way to constantly doing something that brings you something back. So it was born as a need for startup because it brings immediate results. Not exactly sustainable, but customer is customer. So that was the story of how Grow Hacking was born in, um, I believe that was around 10 years ago, actually nine years ago in 2010 where Sean Ellis actually coined the term directing in one of his blogs. He's, actually, he, he's a, a very successful man. He was the head of marketing for many companies, for example, like Lock Me In or Dropbox. And he's also the man after the legendary Dropbox girl hacking case. I will show at the end. 
So now we come to the uh, real question. What is the difference between those two? First, let's look at the how they are similar to each other first. Both of them, as we see from the uh, R, they call the part metric. You guys can remember? Awareness, position, activations, Retention. retentions, Revenue. Revenue. referral. So that's the R, the pirate matrix. So both of them care about, they generate revenue from all the funnels. They don't really get revenue from only the top, but all of them. They both rely on data, both qualitative and quantitative. They use agile, and the last one, the product must be good enough for any of these to be used. Okay, but the real difference is, Pro hackers, they don't care about branding. What does branding mean? It means that when you think of something, when you think of a brand and something pops up, that's the branding. It's actually more complicated, but you can think of that it that way. Like when you think about uh, slush and you have the big event. When you think about VNES, then you have, we have the success club. That's the branding. They're trying to make a brand. But grow hackers, they don't care about branding. Grow marketer, on the other hand, they really care about branding. They really care about attributions. So why, why that, what does this mean? Because Grow Head Kings is about doing cheap, quick stuff in multiple places. That is able to get customer. Attribution means that you, uh, you know that how your customer gets to this place, right? So branding is not a really good attributable place. So Girl Hacking just basically doing small stuff in, very, in small places to get stuff. But Blow Monitor, they care about the long term. And then again, it's about the sustainable and rapid. And last one, Girl Hacking is usually involved a lot of technology. Girl Monitor is they care about the people and the business. So when you want to, uh, this is like the, uh, the Bible for choosing between the two. So if you think that the product will go viral and have high potential for referral, you go for girl hacking. But if you want a sustainable, you go for girl marketing. If you see a clear product and market fit, you go for girl hacking. But if you want to care about the brand, you go for the long way. And so, to end the slide, I want to uh, say something about the legendary girl hacking cases. So these are some of the companies that get their popularity and fame nowadays purely based on, based on one win. It doesn't mean that you need one win to boost up, but these guys, for example Dropbox, they were amazing. They had this, so it was uh, the market back then in the Dropbox, it was their own